So you were there, and huh? at the presentation? No. So um, uh, this is above to discuss about trying to find a way to uh, define a set of ABI for performances because when we go through the different cooling devices, we find a Tamanet uh, framework on out of three kernels. We see that there are a lot, more than, find more than 100 cooling devices. And so the cooling devices just export a, st um, a file where you can set an index a value inside saying set current state. And then we find, we find cooling devices doing brightness for the backlight. Uh, some is just changing the, the current, um, giving the frame rate, and so on. So it's, that, that's, all that is the sign that there is something missing in the, in the framework and missing in the kernel, giving the possibility to the different um, SOC vendors um, to, 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 to use the uh, provided IBI by the kernel. So could have, at the end, a unified IBI. So the result of that is the user space is just trying to set and get values per platform. So it's a specif specific code for each platform. And what we would like to do is to try to unify this IBI so the user space doesn't have to write its own code at each time to reach the different devices, but can use the framework available and with a configuration file, just access the right one and can describe profiles and then set the performances limit on each devices. So the proposal, so yeah, so for the set of these devices, we have some, some of them does not fall under the performance umbrella. So we might have to find something else for that. For the ones falling in this, in the scope of the performances, then we can provide the, the, um, this framework. For devices where we can get the power consumption and set a power limit, then we can use the power cap interface for that. Otherwise, we would like to have a performance interface. And what we can find is in the performance, yeah, performance um, wise devices, we see that we they have specific constraint like uh, applying temporary constraints. So you set a, a limit and then automatically we remove after, after a while. And they specify also throughput and also they use uh, slash dev because they remove the constraint automatically when the process is exiting. So the interfaces uh, we are proposing I'm proposing, and to be discussed here, is uh, normalized. It's normalized interfaces called perf normal, normal min and max, which are normalized through zero to one one thousand twenty three, and we can also put a map where we put the operating point, the performance operating point with a frequency, and um, the performance value, normalized value, corresponding. So if, the, if we need to find which um, normalized value correspond to which operating point, we have in this map this, this information. Um, some, some, we have some devices wanting to have uh, a throughput, a throughput um, value to set the performance. So we can use that. As far as understood, this is something we can put. Um, Could be an example for throughput on a device? Uh, I think it's. Um, we, inter inter okay. mm -hmm. Yeah. We are going to use the Wi Fi of throughput to can scale the, the profile and the data. Yeah. So I was thinking along <coughs> like somewhat yesterday. I mean, I, it, I Okay. Generally speaking, and then uh, you know, just perf min, perf max. Actually, so here's 
for just cooling, thermal stuff. I no, I it is that. specifically no. not for thermal. No, no, no. For, for thermal stuff. Okay. <laughs> but it's that I know. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 Hello. Okay. Yeah. Um, if it is for thermal, I'd see some value in normalizing because it, that's good enough. But if it is for uh, user space to ask for some performance, then I agree with the point somebody else raised in the previous uh, meeting, previous microconference, saying if you want 100 KB, kbps, you just want 100 kbps on whatever system. You don't want to figure out what is that what percentage does it translate to? Right? If it's a video decoding, and if you need only X Mbps for a 1080p video, I don't want to figure out, is it 10%, 50% based on the SOC? But I also see a problem with the units exploding. There are multiple units to add. Somebody needs to figure out. That the problem is that somebody needs to figure out that what, so the hardware, in some cases, uh, exposes like performance interfaces in, in arbitrary units. And it, you don't know how much performance you get in kilobytes per second from, at, at each level, right? So you have to, some, somebody needs to figure out either that will be either the kernel or user space. And well, let me finish. I think that user space is in a better position of figuring this out than the kernel is. Oh. I, I, I've just seen the answer here with the with a map, so I guess we would be able to look up what the 100% looks like, right? Like how much? Yeah, maybe we can just have perf min, perf max, and just a mapping file. Yeah, so I, I think that makes perfect sense. Uh, frequency, or we can have k kbps, and we do the conversion. Yeah. If we give this information. Well, what what I think is ambiguous here is what happens if you have a, if you have a value of zero. Does that mean? it's completely off and it doesn't do anything, or does it mean it's the lowest performance state it can have while still running? Yeah. Out to zero should just be the lowest. Basically, you're saying I don't need anything. It's up to you to do what you want with okay. it, which should be lowest. One second. But um, the map, again, if it's frequency to perf value, so perf value is the normalized value, I'm assuming. Uh, then the question still becomes, like, is it, who's going to figure out, is it kbps to perf value, or is it IOPS to perf value, right? So you'd still have a unit issue there. And I disagree that it'll be easier for user space to figure out because now they need to understand the SOC. And the frequency could translate a different KBPS depending on the bus width and all the complications that a bus might have, an interconnect might have. I don't think we should push this to user space. So I, I have a specific example in mind, to be honest. So with the in uh, in the Intel P state driver, we have um, the interface on the on the hardware side is actually in uh, in in performance units, but which are not re strictly related to frequency, and uh, and it is a pain to to have to convert those units into frequency in the driver, so we can use the, uh, the CPU freak interface. So we would actually prefer to have a a, a generic abstract interface in the in arbitrary units, so we can just you know use it in the, as performance levels and and don't care. And um, because otherwise we have to provide a scaling factor which is not just per chip but per CPU class in a chip. Yeah, quickly. I mean, that's like the P core and E core, yeah. So are you going to talk about instructions? Uh, another way to look at it is you can say, I'll give you performance as instructions per second, right? How many instructions you get to run in a second. I'm just making shit up now, right? MIPS, right? But you're not saying that. You're saying you want to give a normalized value. But if it's normalized, if I'm a system that wants X amount of MIPS, how do I figure out what I'm going to ask you? I don't want to figure that out. The, the whole point of the kernel is to abstract the hardware so that you can use talk to it in a common language. Saying I'll give you a normalized value and saying you figure out how to, how the translates to my hardware seems like the opposite of what we should be doing. I want to go. <laughs> so 
I think having a, a, a normalized value by default that can be used is fine because Correct. for CPU performance, how do you translate that? I mean, but for other devices, it's far easier to use a unit that the device is understanding. I mean, when the device is about um, bandwidth, typically, it's easier to say, okay, I want this value. But what we should take care of is that the value is the user space value, which means that at the end, the driver can set twice because there is the user, but all the, the overhead around that. Uh, I mean, it's not about setting, mapping directly to, to the um, low level bandwidth, but the end user bandwidth. Otherwise, uh, we are facing the same problem. You need to understand how much over, overhead you have internally. So you have to. Yeah, I mean, the user. Yeah. I mean, PMQs in this case would probably be like a minimum request, yeah, yeah. right? So nobody's saying you'll, you won't get more no, than no, it. No. Yeah. So that's kind of, I guess, assumed. Yeah, so that, that's orthogonal to the unit choice. Huh? That's orthogonal to the unit choice, right? But so I, I, I think that the, the, the QoS kind of interface is, is the right choice for this because it allows you to get, to, to give a um, desired value to the, to the kernel. And then it, it may, you know, it may be taken in, into account in different ways, depending, right? So, so it may, it's aggregated somehow with some other requirements from somewhere else, right? Yeah. So this is, yeah, and that, that needs to be done this way. So it, it, to me, QoS is, is, is the right choice. Now, for, for units, right, I, I, I agree that, that in some cases it is better to, to provide, to op operate uh, in, a, in a specific unit space. Um, but then again, as long as this can be, uh, uh, this, this will have to be translated into, into a, some, uh, some hardware uh, performance level anyway, yeah. somehow, but, but some, by, by somebody. You, you talk about, oh, sorry, you want to maybe, yeah. You talk about setting the performance to zero. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. uh -huh. Okay, that's, that's, that's an interesting use case because if we have just CPU frec and we say we, we, we have discrete values, then we cannot set the frequency to zero. It's not possible. But if you change the semantic of performance and you want to say, okay, when I'm setting this CPU on this device, but assuming it's a CPU, for example, to zero, a performance level, then you can somehow pause the CPU. The CPU will not be used uh, anymore. So in, in a PMQS case, the zero would just mean no report. Yeah. Zero means, because okay. you can have multiple people asking, That's right? PMQs allows you to aggregate them. Yeah. Mm. Okay, that's what works for the same no thing. Request. So if, if there are no, no other request. requests, then you can just turn the thing off, right? Yeah. You release your vote. You what? You release, you release your vote. You release Sorry, I have the mic. I'll just when repeat that. When you said zero, when you said zero in the, in the PMQS, but I'm talking about the performance the ABI, if you set zero in the ABI, that yeah. does not mean you set <coughs> yeah, zero. I the think the ABI should be the same. But you can do an action, a different action. If it's superior to zero, you have, uh, you are in a discrete values provided by the different step of the OPP, but it, if you set zero, you don't go through the CPU frag, you can do a different action, reducing totally the, and, uh, the performance. Uh, th that doesn't it's, make sense, right? You can, like, in the CPU case, you, know, you can't just pass the CPU, it just means you don't want it, right? It, PMQ is always about quality of service that, fr that you get, doesn't determine the final, doesn't yeah. give you control of the final system yeah. state. And then going back to the units thing quickly, yeah. I think I agree that we should have like a normalized way to set it, but we should also definitely provide a unnormalized unit-based way to set it too. So we can and provide a map file for yeah, each unit. And I think if the main issue is the name of the unit, like for example, right, if you expose it in SysFS or in a struct, some IOCTL, whatever you expose it to through, right? Or one of the concerns was, okay, this is one unit today, what if we have 10 other units tomorrow? Maybe we should just say per unit min or whatever. <laughs> just, and what that unit means is going to depend based on the device. So for interconnected, it would be MBPS. So, 
for SD card, it'll be IOPS, one second Raphael, right? So that way we leave the SSFS interface, yeah. the user space interface, the common name, mm. so, yeah. uh, but you let the device define. And I think whoever is using a SD card will know they're using IOPS. They're not talking about frames per second, right? So I think it's kind of obvious based on the use case. Maybe that's a good intermediate. Yeah. What if you have two different units? So SD card can be throughput and IOPS. Uh, or KBPS and MBPS. That's Maybe okay. that we can say, hey, if you're writing an interconnect, make it MBPS or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, go. so th that's e actually easy. Uh, so if you have performance unit, just normalize units uh, as the interface, and then you don't need a map file because it will be linear mapping. You only have to say what the, what value, the, what unit, what's the, you know, what the max unit means, right? So 1023 in your case, you can say that this means 100 kilobytes per second, for example, for this particular device and expose it in, a, in CSFS in a file. And now if you have different units, you can expose KBPS, multiple <laughs> multiple files, right? In the yeah, like m m multiple map mapping files yeah, to, yeah. to the, yeah. <laughs> Acting like you. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the two parts, right? It could be interconnect and some could be KBPS in some cases could be MBPS for on a more performance system. In that sense, if you're saying we should have a perf max unit, whatever file that says 1023 means it'll be 100 kilobytes per second in one system, one gigabyte per second in another system, that's okay. But, but I think your point is different which is in a given interconnect, you can ask for latency and you can ask for bandwidth at the same time. But I see this as two different quality well, to ask for. So They're not two different units. Well, if They're two different if attributes to ask for. That's no problem, but huh? it's, as you, you, you just said, IOPS. <laughs> and that's, yeah. that's not the, well, that latency. So we have the yeah, yeah, so you have IOPS and bandwidth, right? I'm saying those are two different attributes to ask for. They're not a unit issue. They're an attribute issue. Unit, unit file, right? Yes. Yeah, so in, in power in power cap actually there there is a units file in CSFS and you then no confusion you that. no confusion yeah so you use abstract the you know normalized interface and then provided what what it means like in, in the in the normal. I don't see value for normalized but it's okay. <laughs> uh, in some cases this will be just normalized and and no mapping to a real life, because, like for the CPU use case I was talking about. We don't know how much frequency this means. It's like perfor performance value. So shall we put, for, exam for example, just two files, performance mean, performance max, and, performance and then... Hmm? And a third one, performance unit, which can be normalized by default or kilobytes. Mm -hmm. or yeah. Yeah. And a unit file. A unit file. Yeah, yeah a so file where you can get which unit is used to set the performance, which can be normalized by default, so between zero and 1023, or you can say my unit is kbps, and so my yeah. unit is frame per second. Or, so or 10 kbps. So. You, you give the list of kbps, or a list of frequency, or a list of something else. Y yeah, so and, basically. And giving the performance, uh, the normalized performance associ association. Like you don't, need, in yeah, case, you don't need to normalize all the time. Okay, the no, two if, options, If right? the interface is normalized, and you act on the interface for min and max, then you have to do a translation between... Yeah, but do we really need to normalize in this case? What's the benefit of normalizing when you know that you can set the kilobytes? No, that was my point. I'm saying I don't see a point in normalization, but if some people want it, we can allow both. No, no, yeah. I think you want, you want Before. a normalized interface for the case where you don't, you don't have any real unit, unit for performance okay. of the CPU, I want just 0, 10, 23, but oh, okay. otherwise okay. I want to set kilobytes. Yeah, then That's we can kilobytes. say perf min, perf max. And perf unit. And perf unit. If it says normalized, it means 0 to 1, 0 to yeah. 3. If Beautiful it says kbps, one. it means kbps. Yeah. That works. But then then the question is that how many units... The yeah, then the question is that how many units do you want to define? Uh, or you want to start with? Just normalize and kilobytes? Yeah, but uh, you need a list. So, so it depends. The, um, um, not, I, I think it depends on the, on the number of dimensions in which you want to yeah. set this QoS, right? So for each dimension, there will be one unit. But you may have 
So we need to think about it. You, there may be more more dimensions than just one in which you you want to yeah, yeah. set those values. So, but, but what I don't understand is why can we just use a file? Can you speak into the mic? Sir? Yeah. <laughs> why don't we can use a file? So we keep perfmin perfmax with the normalized unit always. So we don't have these uh, strange things that dot sometimes it could uh, accept. Uh, KBPS or something else, but we provide another file, which is optional. Can the, the driver can describe it, telling if it's based on frequency on OPP, which gives the different frequency and the corresponding normalized value. If it's KBPS, then you have KBPS at the normalized value. So the point is you that you... Yeah, what's the value? The value of what? You, you have to do twice the translation. Ask them what's the value so that others can hear them. Uh, why, why right. You, why, what's the benefit? <laughs> what's the value? Okay. So I think the point is that you only need to map the maximum to a specific value in, uh, in real life units because the minimum is always there, zero, right? So the, it does need but to well, be mapped. Yeah, that, that provides some other problems. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, whatever. I'm no. Yeah. The, the main. Uh, so I'm. I'm not sure to understand what the benefit of having this mapping. To be honest. And then, so what it means? You will map the zero to the perf min, to a minimum kbpf, or is it zero to say I don't want to use it? That, 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 then you have to I find for the map. So, so from the QS perspective, zero means just zero. I have no requirement, right? Then if you say run, I want so at least one, right? Uh, in yeah, whatever yeah. unit it How is. You, so when you provide a, a map, if you need to provide a map, we will have this question. I mean, no, zero is zero. Zero is zero, and then because this is a linear mapping, then you only need to map the max. I don't think you want a linear mapping. Yes, it has to be linear. How it has it to be a linear yes. mapping because yes. why mapping. not? Because otherwise you have to pro you have <laughs> no. to just provide a function on no, no, the, uh, the, the, the yeah. <laughs> the mapping is would be if you have five OPPs. Yeah, it's, so it's not a linear mapping. You have no. five uh, normalized value yeah. corresponding to the five yeah, OPPs. Okay, so it's not a linear mapping. It is a linear right. mapping. Okay. Z zero. But then what? How, do you do, how do you how do you convert any frequency to normalized yeah, value? Exactly. You divide it by the max frequency yes. and multiply it by one zero two three. That's exactly my point. That's a linear mapping. The, the mapping can create some. So if you have a fixed number of OPP, okay. But if you don't have, you have to provide the state. I mean, if you have a one hundred, one thousand state. Uh. I mean, One you second. Will, you will enter in this situation that the, map, the mapping is not really always easy to do. That depends. I agree if you have five OPP, that's pretty easy. Okay. If you have a, a linear increase, how do you describe that? You don't put a map file. It does not make sense. Going back to the earlier question was, why do we need a map file if you can already request yeah. another unit? Who would choose to use a map file? Yeah. I think this is related to the question of, what we read back from the file after setting a specific value. So if an interface has five discrete states and we write a 73 in it, does this get rounded to the normalized value of the state that it's actually picking when you read it back? Or does it stay at the value that was chosen by the user and is not actually corresponding to the state that, that's there? With round to the... Do, okay. we, do we really do we need to read the effective the actual I mean yeah, that, that's another point. So you can set a performance, but do we want to read the actual level? I mean I set one twenty. Uh, Oh, obviously, yes. So you need to look at it from the user space yeah. perspective. So user space has no idea about how many states there are available, yeah. what's the you know what how far they are from each other, is this a linear mapping or not? So user space will just have a requirement, right? Yeah. I need at least like this much performance. So we don't and <laughs> write the, the, the actual value. We just uh, write one direction. I want this value. But okay. Yeah, but uh, the user space. Read. I think you should be able to read because when you do that in a power cap framework, when you write, uh, well, power cap, the extension DTPM, which is based uh, on the uh, energy model, when you set a, um, a power value, and the power value is corresponding to a, uh, it's in between two steps, then it will choose 
the the the, um, the step below, oh, okay. the limit so below. And when you read, when you read the value, then it's not the value you set; it's the value the system set. So th that depends on the design. The, to be honest, so either you you give the the written value back always, right? So the the, the value that you have written, and you read back your own value, sort of, uh, or you you give uh, the effective. Uh, the effective uh, setting right back from the interface. Both have, uh, there, there, there are good reasons for doing either. Right? You need to d decide which, which one you, you will choose because the, yeah, th there are arguments right, for, for each of them. Uh, but so the point is that from user perspective, they, they just want to say how, you know, the, their requirement in, in terms of performance. So how much, I don't know, frames per second they, they want. And that's it. And then they don't care about why this is mapped to whatever performance states are available in the hardware, right? Also the two aspects, right? If you're talking about reading and saying how much we guarantee the request of the user space, that's sure. You can give that. But trying to say this is the hardware state and this is the how, and how that translates to how much they're going to get, I don't think that will work because for something like bandwidth, it's going to be additive. I might ask one gigabytes, he'll ask two gigabytes. So the hardware will be might be set to three gigabytes, or you round it up and set it to four gigabytes. Yeah. Me reading the value as like doesn't mean I can actually use four gigabytes. Right? I asked for one, and I should only be doing one. And I think the rounding down maybe that for whatever reason they did that design choice. And I don't think it's right because especially these PMQs are asking for a minimum quality of service. You can't round it down, then you're kind of like violating the basic principle of it. Okay. Unless you hit the F max or something, then you can't give. That's a different story. But I think we need to define whether we round down or up for any of these. And it, yeah. I think it's useful for the user to know whether it has been rounded up or down. Um, so I think for the CPU frequency right now, the minimum gets rounded up and the maximum gets rounded down. Is that right? Round up the min, round down the max. No, the, yeah, the, the, round up the min and round down the max. Because the max is a cap and the min is a, and the min is a floor, right? So for this interface, it's probably a good idea to have that too. I mean, like the floor and the cap uh, at the same time, uh, in the same units. And then there may be multiple dimensions. So there may be like, I don't know. Um, I, I have no specific example, but. But I do have a, like if you're talking about exposing back to the user, I don't think we should expose the hardware performance state because I think that'll give the wrong impression, especially if it's a QoS request that can be added. Right, it's just they're going to think they have way more than they're actually having. But but then, so we provide this min and max, and behind that we have this create state. So let's say that the min and the max are both between the same discrete state. How do you deal with the floor and the sale? Uh, because you can't. You fail the request. Uh, let's say that I have. You fail the request because it's true even for CPU frequency. You can set CPU freak min to be more than max and no, max. No, no, you I don't allow that to happen. You fail it. No, no, no. That's not my point. Let's say that uh, I have, let's say I have one gig, two gig. I set the min to one dot two gig and the max to one dot the three gig. I know it's an invalid Which? request. You can't it's service it. It's an invalid request. Yeah. So you have to. We have to deal with that there it's as well. It already should be doable. I would think in PMQOS. Uh, How? Like no, no, two. No. I don't know what the actual interface is, but fail it. If it's a write, fail the write. If it's an API call, fail the API call. Because it's not clear that this is the right thing to do. Uh, failing the write is actually an awkward interface for SUSFS. Because the, the, the right and <laughs> for PMQOS either. Right? Yeah. yeah. So you might be willing to decide what, how we are going to resolve this. But uh, that's safe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's we will have this situation for sure. So the, the alternative would be that the minimum takes precedence. Yeah. So the, if you set a minimum that gets rounded up to something higher than the maximum gets rounded down to, they're both set to the minimum. I, I agree with that. If it's like, say, your minimum is greater than my max, uh -huh. two different. But if you're requesting a minimum and a maximum that can't be satisfied, if you're the only user, 
I think it's so right if, to fail. So if, if I'm the user and I, I write 512 into the both the minimum and the maximum because I wanted to run it after performance, the sensible thing is to still have it run at the at the well at the the minimum. Yes, at the nearest power state rounded up. Okay. Yeah. I think. So we have a weak maximum and a strong minimum. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And we, we just have to be aware. Yeah. 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 I was saying we, we have a strong mean and a weak max, in fact, in the rules. Yes. And then is there already an interface for PMQS for user space, or this is all new? And if it's all completely new, again, if it's just of us, I don't even it's know how it's going to work. It's new in the way we want to uh, present the normalized value. It's new in the proposed feature like temporary constraints on it. Um, there is already DevRec Dev. where you have minimum. It's not unified. Not DevRec, but like is that a unified PMQS interface in the user space where they open a dev and do an Oracle or something like that? When or you no? set the um, latency, there is this PMQS. But it's like not a device? For the performance, except okay. the... Should we just kind of extend and make it something similar to that? Because you're initially talking about some sys devices, but I don't think you're expecting people to write to that, right? Latency is specific for idle state. Yeah, yeah, we should, I'm not saying extend the exact same file, but we should do something similar, no, right? No, no, not the exact same file. Well, right. Aggregated. Yeah, so this is going to be like a file they open and then they call an iOctal? Is that how it's going to work? Um, it should be I'm right because we shouldn't I'm want. Yeah. One quick thing. So for me to play around with it, it'll be super handy to debug using a, a like a writable SysFS or debugfs API. Yeah. But the final API should still be like a file open, so that if it crashes and closes, you release it. Then yes. Uh, yeah. 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 So the problem with this is for an IOCTA interface, you need to have a device special file, yeah. which is. You mean like a MISC file? A, a bit, yeah, a bit. So for CPUs, that, that's, that's kind of okay because then the, you, you, you know what you are doing. But for, uh, for the, the, the devices, especially devices using different units, you will need multiple device special files. Can't you have one file you open and you open? Uh, yeah, and that that gets that, that gets clunky. So so yeah. the SysFS interface is a cleaner one. Uh, but the problem with the SysFS interface is there needs to be a, 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 an entity in user space that will that will marshal all that because you, you user space. So the, there is there will need to be a daemon or something like that controlling that interface from the user space perspective. And different processes talk to this instead of talking directly to the interface. And going from, I don't know, 10 years of past experience and how CPU frequency min, min max are abused, you'll have like a user space agent doing it. Somebody who doesn't know anything about it will say, oh, I can set the min, and they go overwrite what the user space daemon was setting. I think this causes lots of hard to debug issues if you have a file that anybody can write to. Well, I, I think like a... So uh, uh, Plenty of root only. There are multiple things running at this root, right? This is the point, right? Yeah, and they don't necessarily yeah. like each other, even. Yeah, they, <laughs> they may not be talking to each other, but not liking each other as well. So we're on the same <laughs> system, so you know. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> um, well, so, uh, but I, I do think that, you know, go, going. The, the device, the IOCTAL, IOCTAL root, it, it gets very nasty in, it very quickly if you think about like multiple devices that you need to control that use different units of performance and uh, then you have to define special commands and things like that for, for talking to individual devices and you know, and so on and so on. So, yeah. I, I think it's up to the distro to decide who's in charge of writing to this. There can be any number of things that read from it, and I, I absolutely think that SysFS is the better choice here than a character device because it's, it's just you have so many things that might have these, and a character device, like even connecting a SysFS um, thing that we know about to in, in a character device. Yeah, it's, it's 
How do you deal with wake-up sources? I, I'm sure you went through the same issues there too, right? I think we gave us this FS API, but people write to it and crash, and you keep the system awake forever. Uh, yeah, but the, so this is, it is similar, I agree. But the, the, you know, in the SysFS case, it is at least obvious which device this is related to. Whereas in a, in an IOCTAL case, you would need to point somehow to the device you are... Symbling from this to the device file? Well, no, 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 this doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you need to have a command that, you know, a format of a command that will point to the device, like what device it is. So, so would you use a device path in SysFS in, in IOCTAL? So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the 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 like a, devices, the GPU would have like a, I don't know if it's possible. I have a simulate to But the so file. would you create a, a device special file for every device in the system? So do they have to have the same ID or I, I, I don't think it will it will fly. Do they have the unique ID for the Yeah. The number of files you're worried about, or the IDs no. are going to be the, the number of files and, and like finding the right one. Can't you have multiple people open the same file anyway? So that thing can still handle it because you can tell it's a different file pointer. No, 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 not a no. file pointer. It, it is a file uh, ob object. It's, it's device. the device special file. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Maybe I'm not using the right term, but if it's have one device file and multiple people opening, you can still distinguish them apart. Because you right, get a different handle or whatever. But you need to know that, that there is a device special file in that, right? But you yeah, need yeah. To know what device Which device file? file? I know, I know, I know, I understand. <laughs> but I don't know, name it similarly. We, do, we have plenty of device files. You can name it to match bus colon device file name. That needs to be unique. I, I, still, I still don't think it solves any problem because you still have to deal with the exact same problem of having multiple people trying to control the thing. No, that problem isn't there because you open, if you and I open two different the same file separately, the, the driver will get two different handles. So I can tell your def, uh, your input apart from mine, yeah. and I can aggregate it correctly. No. But, yes, aggregation still needs to happen in PMQOS. PMQ supports multiple clients. Some I, of the clients could be in the I kernel. I suppose I continue the discussion in the hacking room because now there is a, another, another buff. buff. Sounds good. Beginning now. Thank you.